The charge sharing model for drain-induced barrier lowering may not be very intuitive, but at least it allows us to quantify the effect. So let's finally develop a, an analytical model for Dibble. And to develop an analytical model, we have to understand drain-induced barrier lowering uh, through the lens of charge sharing. The charge sharing model says that before a channel can be formed under the oxide, there uh, first has to be a uh, depletion region of a specific depth. That depth is called X depth max. And this is the value of the uh, depth of depletion region uh, uh, at which we saturate in a uh, body with uniform doping, or it is simply the depth of uh, doping when we uh, use steep retrograde doping. Uh, in any case, it is a constant number that represents the maximum depth uh, of the depletion region. Now, if you look at a long channel transistor, this depletion zone is formed almost entirely by the gate. But if you look at the transistor with a short channel length, uh, then the depletion zone, the geometry of the depletion zone is, uh, is formed both by the gate and by the drain and the source. Because you see that a region around the drain is depleted by the drain and a region around the source is depleted by the source. And so if you look at the rectangle that represents the depletion charge under the gate, that rectangle is composed of uh, an area controlled entirely by the drain, an area controlled entirely by the source, and an area controlled entirely by the gate. Now this zone is uh, controlled both by the drain and by the gate. So we can think of this small rectangle as two triangles, with one of the triangles being formed uh, entirely by the drain and one of the triangles being formed entirely by the gate. The same can happen on, can be uh, seen on the source side. And therefore, overall, the, uh, the rectangle is formed of a trapezium and two triangles. Uh, the trapezium is charge that is controlled entirely by the gate and the two triangles are charges that are controlled entirely either by the drain or by the source. Now, the situation drawn here is for VDS equals zero, which means that the drain potential is equal to the uh, source potential. Now, drain use barrier lowering uh, is a concern when drain potential is high. So let's see how this looks when we have VDS greater than zero. Specifically, we are interested in the case where VDS is equal to VDD because this gives us the worst case um, then the reverse bias between the drain and the body is much larger than the reverse bias between the source and the body. And the depletion zone around the drain is uh, much thicker than the depletion zone around the source. So we will call the uh, width of the depletion zone around the drain XD and around the source XS. L is obviously the channel length. And therefore, the triangle, which represents charges depleted, uh, exclusively by the drain is now uh, much larger than the triangle uh, corresponding to charge depleted by the source. Now, let us define a uh, factor, which we'll call the Dibble factor F. And this factor, uh, or the charge sharing factor, let's call it the charge sharing factor. Now, the charge sharing factor F is simply the ratio between the charge depleted by the gate and the total charge, depletion charge in the channel. So it's basically the ratio between the charges in the trapezium and the charges in the entire channel. In a long channel transistor, this factor F should be one because the gate is responsible entirely for depleting the channel. And let's recall that drain-induced barrier lowering is a phenomenon where the gate is losing control over some of the charges in the channel. And we can see this here with this big uh, triangle. In a long channel transistor, this triangle would not be significant in relation to the trapezium, but here it is significant. So the lower the value of F, the more drain-induced barrier lowering we observe, the higher the value of F, um, the less dibble. And F is definitely uh, less than or equal to one, and it tends towards one for long channel transistors. So. The total depletion charge in the channel, let's call it Q channel, will be equal to uh, the concentration of depletion 
uh, charge, which is Q times Na, because remember that the body is P-type. When it's depleted, we have uh, a negative ionic charge of Na, uh, or QNA in coulomb, and the uh, volume of the channel is uh, W times L times X depletion max. So this is the total volume of the cuboid of the channel, which is L and X depletion max. This is the depth of the channel and uh, W, which is the uh, depth dimension. And so this is a cuboid representing the total uh, depletion charge in the channel. Now, what is the total charge uh, in the, the total depletion charge due to the gate alone, it is the charge in the prism formed by the trapezium only. So if you have the trapezium looking like this, there will be a prism, and the total depletion charge in this prism is the charge caused by the, uh, by the gate. And so the concentration of ions is still Q times Na, and we just have to multiply by the volume of um, the trapezium, the height of the trapezium is going to be W still, and uh, the area of the face of the trapezium is the height multiplied by the average of the bases. The height is X depletion max, and uh, the height of the bases, um, so we have to multiply by the average, so that would be times 0.5 times the two bases, which are L plus L minus XD minus XS. So this side is L, this side is L minus XD minus XS. And so this is the charge uh, contributed entirely by the gate. If we divide uh, Q gate by Q channel to obtain uh, uh, the charge sharing factor, then everything other than the geometry will cancel out. In fact, W and X depletion max, Q and NA will all cancel out, and we will end up with L minus 0.5 times xd plus xs over l, which is going to reduce into 1 minus uh, 0.5 xd plus xs over l. So obviously, if uh, l is uh, uh, much larger than xd and xs, then this factor tends towards 1, which is something that we know. Uh, in fact, it's um, at this point, it's interesting to think of what XD and XS actually are, because we want this charge sharing factor to be in terms of applied potentials. We want to understand the effect of drain potential on threshold voltage. Remember, this is what drain-induced barrier lowering is to begin with. And so we have to think about what XS and XD are in terms of the applied voltages. And when we look at them, they are just simply the width of the depletion region uh, in a reverse biased PN junction uh, for the drain and the source. So using the equation for the uh, width of the depletion region, we find that XD is equal to square root of VBI plus VDB into 2 epsilon divided by QNA. And XS is equal to square root of VBI plus VSB into 2 epsilon over QNA. Now, this is the um, equation for the width of the depletion region in a uh, one-sided PN junction because we are assuming that the depletion region exists exclusively into the body because the body is much less heavily doped than the either the source or the drain. We can also assume that a source to body potential is zero without much loss of generality because uh, remember that um, that uh, the effect of source potential on, on threshold voltage is already taken into consideration in, um, in, um, in body effect. So we don't actually need to think about source potentials uh, that much. And so substituting for XD and XS, we get F is equal to 1 minus square root 2 epsilon by QNA outside the root 1 over 2L and then this is multiplied by square root of VBI plus VDS minus uh, plus square root of VBI. VBI is the built-in potential, and it's the same on the drain side and the uh, source side. Um, this is VDS now because we are assuming that uh, VSB is equal to zero, which means that the source and body potentials are equal.
Now, we have to think about how this uh, charge sharing factor can then factor into the expression of threshold voltage, because again, drain induced barrier lowering is just simply an impact of short channel on threshold voltage. And so we have to reduce it to uh, something that affects the expression of thre threshold voltage. And so the expression of threshold voltage is V threshold is equal to two phi B plus square root four Q and A epsilon into phi B divided by C oxide minus V flat band. Now, each of these terms in the threshold voltage expression uh, refers to something specific. The first term is the threshold voltage of the surface. So it is the potential of the surface at the threshold voltage. The second term is the potential of the oxide at the threshold condition. And the third is the flat band potential at the threshold condition. So the flat band potential is actually a constant and it is related to the difference between work functions of the gate and the uh, bulk. And therefore, uh, we don't really actually have to write V flat band at threshold voltage. And when you think about it, the uh, flat band potential is not, is not gonna be affected by drain induced barrier lowering. Flat band potential is a physical constant that has to do with doping levels on the two sides of the oxide, on the uh, semiconductors on the two sides of the oxide. It has nothing to do with applied potentials and will not be affected by the charge sharing factor. So the charge sharing factor does not go into this part of the threshold voltage. Uh, v threshold surface is 2 phi B, and this is the value of total bending in uh, the uh, surface of the body at which we saturate. Uh, it doesn't increase above 2 phi B because we enter the strong inversion regime in which we cannot uh, tolerate any excess drop on, this, uh, on the surface because that excess drop will lead to uh, uh, exponentially more charge which cannot be squared with the uh, Gauss relation at the boundary. So 2 phi b is also going to be a constant and is not going to be affected by the charge sharing factor. So obviously the charge sharing factor uh, goes into this part. In fact, we just simply multiply F by V oxide threshold. In fact, we just simply multiply F by this part of the threshold voltage. And so this is how F, or the induced barrier lowering, affects the threshold voltage. F multiplies this middle term, and therefore, if F is small, V threshold is small. And we can see that F is a function of VDS. The higher the VDS, the lower the F, and thus the lower the threshold voltage. It's an effect similar to the body effect, although in its physical origin, it is completely different. We also see that uh, for long channel transistors, F is gonna tend to one, and the middle term of the threshold voltage returns to its original value. So this discussion is fine so far, but we have to justify why we multiplied F by this middle term. I mean, we did it by exclusion. This is the only way where it, where it could go, but why did we multiply by it? It's a unitless constant. We could have divided by it, and it's still we have to justify why this middle term specifically. And so when we look at this middle term, uh, it is actually it comes from the equation for VGB, which is the total voltage drop between the gate and the body of uh, the mass capacitor. And so this this total drop is going to be divided between three components: a drop on the oxide a drop on the surface part of the body and a difference that goes to supporting the uh, difference in work functions between the gate and the and the substrate. And so this is generally going to be equal to V surface plus V oxide plus uh, V flat band or minus V flat band. And so this middle term actually corresponds to V oxide and it corresponds to V oxide at the threshold condition as we said. But V oxide is the uh, drop on the uh, insulator of the MOS capacitor. And it's actually related to the amount of charge and the capacitance uh, in this capacitor by the equation uh, Q equals C times V. So V oxide is going to be equal to Q oxide divided by C oxide. And this is, of course, Q per unit area, and this is capacitance per unit area. Q oxide is actually the charge accumulated below the oxide or above the oxide because we are in, uh, in a capacitor. Uh, 
given that this is the total charge accumulated. And so when we look at this, we find that this square root term is actually the charge accumulated below the oxide, whereas this is the capacitance of the oxide. Now, this charge accumulated below the oxide was always made with the assumption that the oxide created charge in a uh, prism whose cross-section was a rectangle. And that rectangle had a dimension, uh, had an area of L multiplied by X depletion max. But we just went through a whole discussion about why this is not true. This rectangle is not created by the oxide, not coupled by the gate through the oxide. Only this trapezium is coupled by the gate through the oxide. And so we have to reduce this amount of charge by a ratio that uh, accommodates this. And what is this ratio? It is F. So that's why we multiply by F. N now, just to reiterate and like um, go through what drain-induced barrier lowering is, drain-induced barrier lowering, we understood it at the beginning of videos discussing, uh, discussing it as an effect which uh, manifests when channel length becomes very small. And so we found that channel length getting small V threshold started to also drop and it dropped from the value that we expected, not just from old values for old technologies. But in fact, one better way to understand it is that it is an effect of VDS on threshold voltage. This is what we concluded here. And so we see that VDS, higher VDS leads to a lower V threshold. We just didn't notice it as much in long channel transistors because the values of drain potential required to have an a noticeable impact on threshold voltage were so high that the transistor would probably be destroyed before we start to see something useful. But for short channel transistors, you definitely see the effect real quick. So what does drain-induced barrier lowering do? Drain-induced barrier lowering causes us to observe larger off-current. And it causes us to observe larger off-current because we observe a smaller threshold voltage. And so if you just define threshold voltage as the point at which the current, so this is the current, and this is uh, VGS. So if you define it as the point at which you observe a current of I threshold multiplied by W over L, so this is the uh, value of off current you observe at VGS equals zero. With application of high VDS, the threshold voltage shifts down, and therefore you see a higher I off. But in fact, it's much worse than that because drain-induced barrier lowering does not only increase the value of observed subthreshold current by lowering the threshold, it also worsens the subthreshold slope. So you can see this from this graph. Not only has the threshold voltage dropped with a higher VDS, but also the slope at which the current decreases decreases which causes us to see much more subthreshold conduction at VGS equals zero. So if we don't do something about subthreshold current, it would probably dominate the behavior of the transistor. It would definitely dominate power dissipation, and it would definitely undermine our efforts to create dynamic circuits.